Hey guys, Ivan here, and in today's video we got a couple of very interesting bodybuilding updates and as you can see we are starting with Samson Dauda at two weeks after he started his offseason and I don't know what the hell did he do in these two weeks because the changes are really freaking obvious he looks much, much fuller than at the Pittsburgh Pro Guest Posing where he was eight weeks off so right after that he started his cycle and look at this, look at the freaking chest here look at this freaking chest <laughs> Samson Dauda is looking insane right now so this is what he looks like in his off-season, quote-unquote I mean soon his prep is gonna have to start, I guess but the conditioning is also very good at this point what he did in these two past weeks is he just gained the fullness back I mean I'm wondering what did he change, what exactly, what did he take? To make his physique look this much better in two weeks so obviously he didn't get chubby not too much in these eight weeks he only lost that fullness and hardness from not taking anything and now he got it back as you guys know he's coached by his wife and uh, he's ordered in kuwait he's training from there for this prep for the mr olympia and obviously after seeing nick walker the new york pro with his uh, midsection issue I honestly have higher hopes for Samson to beat Nick at a Mr. Olympia the problem, the potential problem with Samson is the fact that he changed coaching so he was coached by Milos Archev, as you guys know, for a couple of years basically ever since he made any big results he was coached by Milos and now he, he changed that so like we saw that his wife can pick him pretty well for the Arnold UK but can she do a proper diet like all the way you know the off season and prep get him shredded and big and full at the same time do all that I don't know we don't know we'll see maybe she learned enough during the process for the past couple of years if she was really following what Samson was doing and so on so maybe Samson is gonna look very good but maybe he won't be able to nail it as well as he was doing it with Milos so Samson you know he's kind of a big question mark we don't know what he's gonna look like but if everything goes well if he progresses more like he was progressing so far from show to show and if he brings decent conditioning, I'm not even expecting his wife to bring him super shredded like Hari Japan shredded he doesn't need to be that shredded if he comes in decently conditioned, let's say Arnold UK with more fullness, with more improvements maybe which I believe is possible to happen because we saw it so many times from Samson it might happen this year again and if his conditioning is decent, if it's not like completely off like he was, let's say, last year at the Mr. Olympia, he was really off, still he plays third, but if his conditioning is improved, you know, he has a fighting chance against the other two guys, Derek and Hari. It is not likely for him to beat them, let's be real, I mean, those two guys are coached by the best coach in the world, Hani Rambert, and they have it figured out, you know, it's not, a, it's not a question mark, we know those guys are gonna be on. So in order for Samson to beat them, he needs to improve quite a bit, and come in more conditioned with the same size, same fullness or more size and more fullness so it's gonna be tricky but there is a possibility because he's very complete, he improved so much in the past couple of years he's a big guy, he, he, is, he has a size, he has a shape, he has it all basically it's all about how well he does this prep and how well he peaks for the show now as far as him versus Nick once again like I said in my previous video, I think there is a possibility of Nick improving his midsection control at least and then making his waist look smaller so if that happens, that's gonna be a very very different Nick Walker but, but still, if I was a betting man right now if I had to put my money on somebody, all things considered you know, Samson changing coaching and uh, Nick with his stomach issue I would still bet on Samson honestly because look at this here man look at this madness, look at his side chest and again, this is only two weeks after he started his cycle two weeks, only two weeks and he cleaned out completely for eight weeks before that so there is a big chance of Samson bringing something out of this world for the Mr. Olympia and honestly, I don't know how much is it about coaching I feel like Samson wasn't willing to go to the dark place to do a bunch of cardio and so on and now, after all the drama with him and Milos and his wife I feel like he's willing to put in more work than ever before just to prove everybody that he can do it by himself or with his wife so I believe there is a big possibility to see the best Samson we ever saw 
But I'm telling you, right now, what he looks like after two weeks of offseason, it's crazy. It's very, very impressive. You guys tell me down below what do you think and what do you think what he's going to do at a Mr. Olympia. All right, next up, we got a couple of really cool shots from Beef Stew, Stew Sutherland. And this guy is competing at Cali Pro today, I believe in a couple of hours, maybe, maybe even less. And he's going to be facing Tony Burton. That's his, really his only challenge. Of course, there is Christian Wolski as well in the top three, but I believe it's going to be between Beef Stew and... Antonio Burton for the win. Can this guy right here, Beef Stew, beat Antonio Burton? Last year at the New York Pro, Antonio Burton beat Beef Stew. This year, same story. However, in my opinion at least, it wasn't that far off between these two guys at the New York Pro. And the scorecard is going to confirm that as well. There wasn't a big difference in points between these two guys. It's not like Tonio destroyed Beef Stew and he left him like a couple of spots behind. No, no, it was like clear third and fourth. So I'm not even saying that Beef Stew was close. It was clear. But here's the thing. At the New York Pro, Beef Stew, in my opinion, wasn't in his best condition. He could have been more conditioned. Look at his legs here, for example, and his midsection, his chest. I mean, literally everything. He could have been drier. Antonio was in really good shape, he really brought it for the New York Pro, but I believe he was better at the Arnold Classic Brazil, which was three weeks before the New York Pro, I think that was his best peak this year, for the New York Pro he brought it again, but I think he was less full, maybe, maybe less hard, so I don't think it was his absolute best, let's say Arnold Classic was so far his best, let's call that 100%, and New York Pro was maybe like 90-95%, and how many shows back-to-back -back can you really pick? I mean, it wasn't back-to-back. -back. Arnold to New York, it was like three weeks. And now we're going to have one week between New York and California Pro. And I'm wondering, can he really bring back what he brought to the Arnold Classic? I don't think so. Can he even repeat the New York Pro? I doubt that also. I think he's going to be like 5% worse. And Beef Stew, once again, this was not his absolute best. Maybe that's exactly what he was planning to come here at like 90% and then sharpen up for the next show and win that one and actually qualify for the Mr. Olympia by winning the next show which would make a lot of sense which is exactly what I would do he knew he can't beat Nick Walker he knew he can't win the New York Pro but he very much can win the next show, Cali Pro so why peak 100% for the New York when it's gonna be extremely difficult to maintain that kind of peak for a week or two or I don't know how many shows he plans on doing more so I don't think it'll make sense to do that so I don't think he did it I think he didn't look his best intentionally because he has a couple of aces up his sleeve and I think he's gonna use them for the California Pro and Tony of you already know he said it, he went all out for Arnold Brazil so best case scenario for Tonio at the, at the California Pro, he's gonna be the same as he was at the New York, but I'm willing to bet that he's gonna be a little bit worse, and Beef Stew is gonna be a lot better. But then again, that's just an assumption, it makes sense, but we'll see on stage. However, in his most recent physique updates, he does look great, he looks really hard, I think he does look a little bit more shredded, I think he does look overall better. Maybe not a crazy amount better, but it's still not a show day. I believe he's going to improve even more from this look to the show day. So the question is, is it going to be enough? Can he beat Tonio if he's a little bit improved? What do you guys think? Tell me down below. All right, next up, we got a little physique update. Finally, a physique update from Chris Bumstead, our current classic physique Mr. Olympia. He took this photo with, uh, I don't know, some TikToker or whatever, some Instagram influencer, I'm not sure who he is. But apparently he is popular enough and he's doing good enough to be able to train and uh, pose with uh, Chris Bumstead. As you can see right here, Chris Bumstead looks pretty, pretty good. I would say surprisingly good. He has, you know, a decent fullness and roundness and he looks pretty lean as well. Pretty hard too. I thought at this point he's like completely off of everything and just looks soft and small and so on, but no, no, he's actually holding his own, he's actually looking pretty good right now. But it's interesting to see this update right after Pittsburgh Pro where he was kinda <laughs> made fun of. He was kinda bullied <laughs> on stage basically by his two biggest rivals, 
uh, top three Olympia classic physique finishers, Ramondino and Urs Kolecinski, they were trying to make him to, to lose the shirt and pose with them, but he wasn't willing to do it. He wasn't going to do it because I don't know why. I mean, he probably wasn't looking his best. And they, they took an advantage of that. They were trolling him. I'm sure he was pissed off at this moment. Look at this. Look at Urs lifting up his sleeves and then Ramon flexing the bicep in front of his head. I mean, this was hilarious. And I guess at this point we all thought Chris, I mean, the reason why he's not taking his clothes off is because he doesn't feel like he looks good. But after seeing this photo, I gotta say, I'm positively surprised. I thought he looked worse. I mean, I wish we see a physique update to actually see what he looks like. I mean, everybody's talking about whether he's gonna compete or not. As you know, he became a father. He won, I don't even know how many Mr. Olympias, like five at this point. So for how long will he keep going uh, with his health issues and so on? Nobody knows. But after seeing this, I'm pretty sure he plans on competing this year. I don't know how many more years, but yeah, I think this one is definitely in the plans. And I think on that stage, Urs and Ramon won't be as happy as they were at Pittsburgh Pro Gas Posing. Anyways, guys, tell me what do you think about Chris Bumstead, about Beef Stew, and about Samson Dauda in the comment section down below. If you guys enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. For more videos like this, guys, please subscribe to this channel. Thank you so much for watching. See you soon, guys. All the best, and bye-bye.